Hello, everybody, and welcome back into another trade reaction video. These are coming fast and furious in the last few days. I uh, just finished the Timo Meyer trade. We're on to another one, and this involves the Toronto Maple Leafs. And of course, joined by Alex Hobson, who uh, covers the Maple Leafs, also Maple Leafs Lounge. Thanks, Alex, for coming on. Yeah, and uh, like I said a couple seconds ago, <laughs> bursting at the seams with thoughts. So uh, happy to happy to be here. All right. Well, um, this is the trade. So the Maple Leafs acquired their defenseman, which is what we were talking about. Could have been the next move after the O'Reilly trade. So they get Jake McCabe, uh, 50% salary retained by the Chicago Blackhawks. They also get another bottom six forward in Sam Lafferty. Um, some conditional picks, so fifth round picks in 2024 and 2025, both conditional. I won't go through the conditions. You guys can look that up, <laughs> whatever the conditions. I don't even know if they've been released yet. Um, then Chicago receives a first round pick. Then 2025, that's a conditional pick. Second rounder in 2026, Joey Anderson and Pavel Gogolev as the two other pieces of this trade. So Alex, uh, reaction to this trade. Um, like I said, you're bursting at the seams. So uh, what do you think about the Maple Leafs uh, acquiring these two guys? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I think I, I don't think this is anything different than what pretty much every insider, every analyst, every fan is saying right now. But if this trade doesn't show you that the Leafs are all in this year, then I, I don't know. I, I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was it was sort of believed after the Ryan O'Reilly trade by everybody that they were going to go out and like they weren't done like that. Mm. Like there were the vibes that this was going to be an all in year after that already. But it's one thing to say that it's another thing to go out and do it. And, you know, for them to sh show that they're show that they're fully committed to making this year, just about nothing more than playoff success. Uh, they go out, they trade two first round picks, which they've haven't done in recent memory. And this is by far the biggest, the biggest trade that any, the least have had at any deadline in the past yeah. couple of years. So for them to go out and part with two draft picks in total for the, I mean, that's obviously both trades, but to lose two first round picks, to lose a couple prospects, and they haven't touched anyone on the roster yet. So uh, yeah, it, it shows you that they're all in. They they wanted a top six four. They went out and got it in O'Reilly. They wanted their top four defensemen. They went out and got it in McCabe. And they got two bottom six fours with bite that, you know, forwards like this traditionally have given the Leafs a lot of trouble in the playoffs. So uh, for them to go out and get, uh, Achari and then obviously Sam Lafferty in this deal. I mean, you just addressed four different, four <laughs> different holes in your lineup right there. Like I, it's hard to get more all in than that without going for one of the top names, like a, like a Patrick Kane or a Tebow Myers. So, uh, I mean, if nothing else, it shows that Dubas is committed to one thing this year. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about them going after McCabe rather than like, a, like you said, a Chikrin or um, Eric Carlson, which probably would never happen, but, uh, you know, McCabe's a serviceable defense and he's one of the top names in the trade bait boards all over. Um, what do you think about getting him over like, like Chikrin, some guy like that? Well, I think the main thing, and, and it, Dubas was sort of on record saying this, he said that they specifically wanted to go after a defenseman that could that could replace Jake Muzzin, sorry, Jake Muzzin's style yeah. of play in the playoffs. Like you look back to that Tampa series, and we all know how close it was. Jake Muzzin was their best defenseman by far. And you know, although he looked rough in his first couple games, the only the only games really that he played this year, um, for him to look tough, it's easy to forget how much he meant to that defensive core and how much a, a defenseman who plays the same style that he does is important, yeah. how important that is to your, to your back end in, in, in a playoff series against a team like Tampa, no less. So yeah. um, you obviously see with the salary being retained too, they, they want to have McCabe on their defensive core for a couple of years. Dubas mm -hmm. likes going after guys to term and even Sam Lafferty's got another year after this yeah. year. So um, it was, it was a big move to get that salary retained because you've got a guy who can play in the top four if needed. Probably ideally you'd probably want him in the bot on the bottom pairing uh, all things considered, but overall um, to get a guy that cheap, I mean, it's, it, it, it makes sense for, for a guy like Jake McCabe, or I mean, not that it makes sense <laughs> rather, but it's, it's uh, yeah, it, 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 it's a steal for a guy like Jake yeah. McCabe, especially when you consider that Jake Muzzin had a couple, when Dubas acquired him, he had a couple of years on him too. So it's almost like you're bridging the gap for the next couple of years and emulating <laughs> that play style. For sure. Yeah. I, I think this is a big one and you know, we'll see how it all plays out in the playoffs. looks like the O'Reilly Achari trades a win at this point. They've fit in almost perfectly into the lineup. Um, we'll see how Jake McCabe does and Lafferty. Great piece. Um, I know Gail over uh, in Blackhawks land there. She, she said, make sure you're talking about Lafferty because he's a, a great, uh, 
addition too. So um, I'm sure the Blackhawks are, you know, they're rebuilding, they're getting all their, their picks and they got another two here. So I, you know, and they were talking about what the Blackhawks are going to do. And now they finally do something. Yeah. And, move some and of it comes people. before the Patrick Kane trade. That's right. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's huge overall. And uh, I, I think that, you know, like I keep saying, the but the bottom line is that this year is all in. You know, they're not yeah. they're not focused on next year right now. They're not focused on the draft. They're not focused on free agents. They're they're focused on winning a round, and yeah. that's really yeah. <laughs> that's really what it comes down to. It's been six years; they haven't done that yet. So, um, I think it was overall just great, great trade overall. I think that Chicago made out pretty well for two guys yeah. that probably. I mean, they had term four obviously, but they got their first round pick. Um, overall, just. Uh, I think it's one of those trades that could define could define Dubas's time here, depending on how yeah. far they go in the playoffs. You saw um, another thing I'd like to point out actually is that they, I found it in I you know I was kind of mapping this out in my head and because <laughs> I suggested earlier today actually that they trade for that Packer, so I was kind of shocked that it happened that quickly. Um, you look at the deadline that the Colorado Avalanche had last year; they went for a second line forward or a middle six forward, a top four defenseman, a fourth line center, and a fourth line winger. And that's pretty much exactly what the Leafs have done this year. So you have to wonder if maybe Dubas was looking at them and their strategy at the deadline last year and, and maybe taking some notes for himself. So that's another thing that may have crossed my mind. True. Yeah. That's a bit, that's a, that's a good point. Um, I mean, that's what the avalanche didn't all that panned out too. Like none of the trades they made were bad. So, and it looks like that could be the case here too. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll have more expanded thoughts on Maple Leafs Lounge uh, tomorrow morning and mm-hmm. you guys are watching. So, but we have the quick reaction here and uh, thanks Alex for coming on the show and just giving your quick thoughts on this. And um, like I said, we'll have more, more in-depth analysis on Maple Leafs Lounge later on, but, um, and you'll Alex will expand a bit more on it. And of, of course on sticks in the six as well, <laughs> I'm sure. So uh, <laughs> yeah. stay tuned for all the rest of the coverage and make sure you're keeping it locked on the There's going to be a lot more analysis articles coming out on this trade as well. So uh, make sure you're keeping it there and on YouTube as we keep going closer to the deadline, it doesn't look like there's going to be much going to be happening on deadline day. <laughs> Just like every other year. Not many big pieces like. left <laughs> and Chikrin and Gavrikov and all them maybe trading the next day or so too. So um, we'll see what else happens, but uh, until then, uh, make sure you're uh, keeping it locked and um, we'll see you next time.